my friends and happy Thursday night. I am so excited to show you guys this necklace. It's, um, it's called Free Spirit. And how it came about is, um, I thought I really need a fun little casual necklace for this summer. Uh, something that has a lot of color, something that's kind of on the dainty side, um, something that goes with just about anything. So that is exactly what we're making today. So let me show you what it looks like. And um, I'm going to make it in a different colorway today. But this is a super fun colorway, I thought. It has just a little bit of everything. We start with sodalite. I think actually I like the other side of the sodalite a little bit better. It looks a little bit like, um, like a landscape or maybe like the moon. It just has so much character. And speaking of character in stones, of course, because I'm using natural stone and because they're, a lot of them are just free form, they're going to vary a little bit. So, um, in fact, that's one of the reasons I love working with stone is that every, every little bead is just a little bit different. Uh, because, of course, it's, um, it comes to us from Mother Nature. And so anyway, starting with sodalite, and then we have um, spiny oyster, which, of course, we have all been loving the spiny oyster. And um, it is such a vibrant and beautiful um, substitution for coral because we don't really use coral anymore but it's it has this very beautiful vibrant coral color and then there are so many different varieties of jasper there's amazonite there is rhodonite there's just a little bit of everything here there is garnet and hessianite garnet and um, a little bit of turquoise. Lonnie says, good afternoon, I made it. Hi, Lonnie, good afternoon, and I'm so glad you made it. Fonda says, good evening, everyone, happy Thursday. Hi, Fonda, and happy Thursday to you. Ellen says, hi, Irina and everyone. Hi, Ellen. And Karen says, good evening, all. Hi, Karen. Carmen says, hi, Irina, Tony, and everyone. And hello, Carmen. And Yolanda says, good evening, Irina, Tony, Lauren, and all. Hi, Yolanda. Allie says, looking forward to this cute casual necklace. Oh, thank you so much, Allie. Yolanda says, pretty. Thank you, Yolanda. Lonnie says, good afternoon. Been making jewelry the last two days. Awesome. I can't think of anything that's more fun. Barb says, good evening, everyone. Hi, Barb. Angela says good, says good evening. Hello, Angela. Dawn says hi. Hi, Dawn. And Pammy J says good evening, Irina, Tony, Lauren, and everyone. And hello, Pammy J. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining me today for this fun, casual necklace. So the idea is it's kind of small. It's you know, it's very lightweight and it's on the short side. It's, um, it's just something that you throw on and you can go to the beach, you can go grocery shopping, or you can go to a little summer party. So it's just chic enough where you want to show it off, but it's very casual. Kim K says, happy Thursday, beautiful necklace. Thank you so much, Kim, and um, happy Thursday. Fonda says, looks like a great necklace to use up your onesie twosie beads. You are absolutely right, Fonda. There are a lot of just like um, maybe one of or two of or occasionally a few more. But it's, uh, it's something that I, I sort of um, thought long and hard about uh, as far as what goes together. And yes, you could definitely wing it and create your own colorways 
but um, I, I really am just so happy with the colorways I came up with because as I mentioned, where this project came from is my own want and need to have a new necklace for, for the summer. And this is exactly what I envision. Julie says hello. Hello, Julie. All right, so why don't we get started? And this is one of my favorite techniques, I have to tell you. It is knotting, and I have been doing a lot of that lately. And um, I'm actually finishing this in a slightly different way than I have been. Um, I would like to think of just a more casual way, and I really like how it looks and feels. So we are going to start in a very similar way as uh, we have been um, starting several projects lately. And yes, I'm folding a little piece of paper because we're about to make a self needle. And we're going to do that on both ends. So for this necklace, we start out with five feet of Ceylon. And, um, and that's what you're going to have in, in your kit. Ellen says, I love the pearl colorway. Oh, thank you so much, Ellen. You know, I started out really loving the soda lights and the, all the little vibrant gems colorway uh, first. And then I sat down and I started creating the pearl colorway and I really bonded with that one as well. So it looks like I'll be making one of each for myself for this summer because these are going to be displayed in the store. So I'll just have to make an extra one of each. What a hardship, right? All right, guys. So um, I have um, my two ends of the Ceylon and I am just going to put a little bit of super new glue on each end and super new glue dries rather quickly. So as soon as the glue goes on, I just wipe it off immediately. So this is going to be a slightly stiffer end. That is what I call a self needle. And super new glue is absolutely perfect for making a self needle when you use Ceylon. And can you hear that little squeak? That's awesome because that means that we're removing as much glue as we can. You really want to remove as much as possible. And for me, I have found out that is what works best. Kathy Kay says, hi everyone. Hi Kathy, and thanks for joining us. And, and I'm just going to set this aside for a moment while we start on our pendant. Ali says, really enjoying all of your sea line projects. So many uses for all of the cord you get on a spool. Oh, thank you so much, Ali. You know, I absolutely love working with sea line. I think you guys probably can tell because it is so versatile. Here, let me just give you a tiny, tiny preview. Are you guys excited? This is what we're making tomorrow. And if you're thinking, wait, wasn't this the amethyst necklace? Yes, in fact, it was because it is interchangeable. So let's, just for fun, let's change it out. But anyway, the reason I just picked it up is because you love Ceylon, I love Ceylon. So I just wanted to show off one more use for Ceylon. And if you guys join me tomorrow, tomorrow morning at nine o'clock Central Standard Time, this is what we're going to be making. Wow, did you guys see that? That was magical. It started out as a double, um, what, what is it called? Double terminated. Terminated crystal, and now it is amethyst. Kathy Case says, love the pearl necklace. Thank you so much, Kathy. Anyway, this is my preview for tomorrow morning. So I'm so glad you like the pearl necklace because that's the one we're going to be working on today. So this pearl, I love these pearls. 
Um, so this is, you probably remember um, the turquoise pieces that have this kind of a copper edging. And um, so these are pearls with that same copper edging. And these particular pearls are like kind of a subtle um, teardrop shape. It's a Baroque shape, so each one is going to be just a little bit different, which is exactly what I love about them. So you can see the slightly elongated shape. And um, these two are not exactly, well, maybe they are twins, but they're not identical twins. They're fraternal twins. Mary Elizabeth says that is awesome, and what a surprise. Oh, thank you so much, Mary Elizabeth. I'm thinking you're probably talking about the, the Shaker Ray necklace. And I will come back to this one at the end of the video and tell you a little bit more about it. Kim K says, I'll definitely watch tomorrow's replay. Wow, beautiful. Oh, thank you so much, Kim. I love that you're excited about it because I'm so excited about doing that project. I, um, you know, I designed this piece about 20 years ago and I made quite a few and then for some reason I stopped making them and now I just came back to it and I'm loving making them again. So I just uh, put the head pin through my pearl. So in the kit, when you get the kit, you will have a head pin and a ball pin. So we'll save the ball pin for the very end when we're ready to finish our necklace, we're going to use the ball pin for my little bauble at the end. But in the meantime... Fonda says, I'm on vacation tomorrow, so I get to watch legally, LOL. I can't wait for tomorrow's project. Oh my gosh, Fonda, you are so funny. I love it. I am so glad you get to watch me legally. So, um, so here we go. I have my pearl on the head pin and we are going to start making a wrapped loop and before we wrap the loop we're going to put the loop into a soldered jump ring which I have right here. I think I'm going to maybe move one of these for now just to make a little room and I'm going to make the loop with my round nose pliers. So of course we always make the loop in the opposite direction of that 90 degree bend. And I didn't leave a whole lot of space between the loop and the pearl because it's not a very long head pin. And oh, so very important thing. So yes, I could have made the loop and then used an open jump ring and connected it, but I wanted this to be really sturdy because uh, we're taking a bead and we're using it as a pendant. So what better way than connect it to a soldered jump ring and we know that that is never going to come apart because it's literally soldered so it's solid metal and that is going to be our bail so i am stringing the jump ring right into that loop so there we go we're connected now and i'm going to wrap the loop. So however many coils I can squeeze into that little tiny space. So it looks like two coils and that should be enough. Connie says, hello everyone, running late. Hi Connie, I'm so glad you're joining us and you're not running too late because uh, actually I just started on the project. And for anybody who is just joining us, I will show you what the finished project looks like. Okay, so I just tucked in the little wire end, and this is what we have. So we have our soldered jump ring as our bail. So that is a good start, right? So in the meantime, guys, so if anybody is just joining me, so this is what the finished necklace looks like. This is a different colorway, obviously, but the idea is the same. So we have all sorts of fun organic pieces 
that are knotted onto the sealon. And of course, we just created self needles on either side, on either end of our sealon. And we are just about ready to start stringing. But before we do that, I will show you what the ends look like. So this is um, a little extender chain and of course our lobster claw. And what is different about this type of finishing? I don't know if you guys notice, but um, I don't have something that I normally use and that would be a wire guardian. So I skipped the wire guardians all together for this one because it's such a, such a casual necklace and I feel like adding that little bit of hardware makes it a little bit more structured and I didn't want it to be that structured. So it's kind of like having a piece of clothing, like a t-shirt that you're really comfortable with, so or comfortable in, and it's cute, but it's really comfortable. It feels like jammies. So it's that's sort of how I'm thinking about this necklace. So uh, this is the colorway that we're working on today. And I called the colorways, so the really colorful one, the one with the, the soda light, pendant is called kaleidoscope and the pearl and turquoise one is called seaside there's more in here than just turquoise but i'll i'll talk about it as i start nodding okay guys so i think it is that time we're going to start nodding so um i have remember i just made myself needles and my glue is long dry. Um, and so we're just going to cut the sealon at a nice angle, making a little point at the end of each, um, of each end of our sealon. And um, before I start, I'm just going to tie a knot right in the center. And this way I know exactly where to start. And if you're not exactly in the center, it's just not going to matter because you do have a lot of extra string for this. So we have um, all sorts of fun beads for this project. And I didn't even grab all of the beads that are used in here. Uh, but you can follow my pattern. Well, I should say my non-pattern or you can create your own. And the way that I selected the stones, pretty much anything goes. My, um, my pattern slash non-pattern is usually just a little bit more chunky toward the front, although it's pretty subtle, but you can see there's some chunkier beads and some, some groupings of beads. Um, and then it gets just a little bit more dainty towards the end. But you can really play with the beads and, um, and position them however it makes sense to you. So I'm going to start stringing my beads. And um, in the original necklace, I have two little organically shaped pieces of spiny oyster framing our pendant. And on the pearl one, I'm going to have two four millimeter beads. They're, uh, they're African turquoise. So we have two African turquoise beads framing, uh, framing our pendant. And I'm being a little bit picky with the African turquoise because, you know, I really like to have a little bit of a um, contrast between the two. I might even switch out the first one. I know I'm being very particular, but, you know, as I get going, it'll, it'll just get so much, um, I don't know, more intuitive. So I picked a slightly darker one and a slightly lighter one, just because I, for something like this, I really don't want true symmetry. 
I definitely want balance, and we'll talk about balance, but I want something that is going to keep my little jump ring in place and frame the pendant nicely. So now we're just going to tie another knot on the other side, and this knot is going to keep our beads in place. And of course, all these knots that I'm using are just very simple overhand knots. And if I were going to create a longer space in between the beads, I would probably have a little piece of straw, as you guys have seen me do in some of the other projects. But for this one, literally, you just have, oh, about, um, four to six millimeters in between the knots. And it would be just so tedious to have this tiny little piece of straw. If you guys know what the straw technique is, just let me know. But with, with a little tiny space like this, I just really prefer eyeing it. So I am simply going to start stringing beads and, um, and knotting. Yolanda says back on. We'll have to watch the replay later. I think she's having laptop problems. Oh no, Yolanda. I really hope you resolve your laptop problems. And I'm really hoping that everyone else is doing okay. Can you guys see me? Can you hear me okay? All right, so here's another bead. So there's all of maybe four millimeters in between the beads. And I may or may not loosely follow the pattern here. Or maybe I'll just mix it up a little bit. Maybe we will um, we will swap the beads, the position of the beads. And um, so actually I didn't grab all the beads so I will maybe use one of these little fossil jasper beads. I don't know, can you see the really pretty pattern on this fossil bead. It's just so beautiful. I love looking closely at the beads, the gemstone beads. All right, so we're going to string that on and tie a knot at the other end of the bead. So as you can see, it's very simple. There's really no pattern. You come up with your own order of beads, whatever makes you happy at that time, that is exactly what you do. So sometimes I have my beads in um, a little bit of a cluster. So maybe two or three beads at one time. So maybe I will um, do that right now. So a really good example of this is um, these Roman glass beads. And uh, I love working with Roman glass. I, I throw it in random projects here and there. And I really like it in a cluster of three. Isn't that really fun? So we are going to use that as a group and just tie a knot on the other side. Allie says, so smart with the knot placement, first to center the pendant and supporting beads. Yes, I know the straw technique. Oh, good. Thank you so much, Allie. And you know, if somebody does not know the straw technique, it's very simple. You simply use a straw to measure the spaces. And if you want your beads to be knotted um, equidistantly, uh, that is a really good way, but except for um, something like this, where the space is so, so teeny. Kathy K says, love the yellow highlight beads slash fossil, fossil beads. Just oh. a burst of sunshine. Yes, thank you so much. I do feel like um, it's not just turquoise. It's not just the pearl. But to me, this does have this feel of... Um, beautiful summer day and I called it seaside so of course it's like you know you just feel like being at the ocean on a really beautiful summer day and it just makes you feel good 
Okay, so you just go in whatever order you want and maybe we'll do one more little group and maybe then we'll jump to the next step. So I do have a lot of fun little beads. I love these um, Tibetan agate beads and they are just perfect. I think, um, well, really any four millimeter beads. So I have three little groups. I have the Tibetan beads framing a QB and then I have the African um, African turquoise beads and then somewhere, yes, I do have um, picture Jasper also framing the little cubes. And you will get three little cubes with this, so you, you don't have to use all of them, but you can. In fact, um, in, um, in the other colorway variation, the one I called Kaleidoscope, this guy right here, let me show you. I only used one QB. I just, I don't know, I was just happy with the way that this looks on the side and I um, felt like I'm just going to leave it as a single grouping like this. But you do get three cubes and if you wanted to use it the way that I'm using it in the pearl necklace, you could do that as well. So in in the original colorway, the kaleidoscope one, I used, I want to say this is sepia, and it's like a very light beige. It's not a white and it's not a gray. It's kind of a, it's kind of a sepia tone. And then in, um, in the seaside necklace, I know it may look a little bit similar, and actually it is very similar, but it's really more of a beige because I really felt that the sepia tone would blend in a bit too much with the Tibetan agate. It just was not making me happy. But the beige really does make me happy. I feel that it really offsets the turquoise beads very well, and I just think that the whole colorway works for me. Kathy Kay is wondering, what is the length of the completed necklace? Oh, Kathy, I am so glad you asked. So my samples, uh, not including the extender chain, which is, okay, so the extender chain is right here, uh, which is two inches. So not including the extender chain, my samples are about 16 inches long. So with the extender chain, they're 18 inches long. However, we put down 24 inches. Um, I would say 24 inches is the maximum. And you know, truly, it's not exactly the maximum. You could make it even longer, but you do have a few extra beads in your kit. Plus also, you could space these out just ever so slightly wider. For example, instead of four millimeters in between, you could, uh, you could have five or six millimeters in between, and that obviously will give you more room. And uh, with the five feet of Ceylon, you will definitely not run out of Ceylon. So, you know, we know that some people really like a longer necklace, so I would say you can um, you can easily make it a 24 inch, but I like mine a little shorter. And for store samples too, sometimes it works a little bit better when they're shorter. All right guys, so now I'm using the Tibetan beads with the QB in between. So I really do love that look. I think it just brings something different it, it brings a little uh, metallic gleam and uh, and that's fun metals are fun so and I do love the QBs because it, it just brings in this uh, very handmade texture all right guys so this is exactly what you do until you get to your desired length on both sides and i generally not a little bit on one side and a little bit on the other side so to me um 
making this look good is about contrast. So sometimes contrast is a little bit more obvious, like the kaleidoscope version of the necklace is obviously so much more contrasting. So sometimes I will use groups of the same color, as you can see here in front, I'm using a lot of the spiny oyster. And then I start using beads that are very contrasting to the spiny oyster. So outside of these little groups, I try to go for as much contrast as I can get. It does get a little bit more challenging when your colorway is a little bit monoc a little bit more monochromatic. So you can see that obviously there are not quite as many colors in the seaside variation of the necklace. However, you do have a lot of different shades of turquoise and those blue greens, plus you also have a lot of shades of um, white, beige, brown, yellow. So it's kind of like uh, the sea and the sand. And so you can really play with those. Plus, of course, you will have um, a picture of mine. So if you want to follow that, great. Or if you want to mix it up and do it a little differently, that's awesome too. Maria says, hi, Irina and all. Hi, Maria. Thanks for joining us. You know, I love it when you guys just say hi. You know, it, it lets me know you're out there and I love it because then it's more like, you know, we're all here and we are interacting. And in the meantime, too, if you think of anything you would like to see as a project in the future, please let me know. I love your suggestions. Allie says the metal breaks up, breaks it up very nicely. Mixed metals might be cool, too. Yes, you're absolutely right, Allie. In fact, you're kind of reading my mind here because what we're looking at here is a little bit of a mixed metals piece. It is subtle, but we have a metallic copper edging on the pearl. And um, so, you know, even though it's called copper, but it's really more of a um, color of brass. So in the kaleidoscope variation, I went with all brass findings because it really matches the edging. And then in the seaside variation, I went with silver because to me, this really looks good as mixed metals. Barb is wondering, do you have the seaside version on Etsy already? Barb, that's a great question. Not yet because I have yet to finish it. Uh, in fact, during this video, we will be finishing this necklace and we will put it on Etsy tonight. So. The Kaleidoscope variation is already on Etsy, in the Etsy shop, and uh, the Seaside, um, sometime maybe by 9 o'clock tonight, we will have in the Etsy shop. Oh, actually, you know what, maybe it'll be tomorrow. Um, because we'll... tonight it'll be a surprise. Yes, it, exactly. But in all likelihood, it'll actually be tomorrow, so please be patient with us, guys, and thank you in advance. Okay, so now we are going to jump over, you know what I say, it's uh, through the magic of Facebook Live. Now we have a necklace that is almost finished. So obviously you knot your necklace however you want to, you get to your desired length, and then I will show you exactly how to finish it. Sabrina says, hello, hello, Irina, Tony and all. Hello, Sabrina, and thank you so much for joining us today. Kim C. says, greetings, Irina, Tony, Lauren, and all. Hi, Kim C. How are you, my friend? All right, guys. Um, so we are ready to finish. So on one end, we are going to have a little extender chain. On the other um, end, we're going to have a lobster clasp. So we are doing this a little bit differently this time. I am skipping um, skipping the um, wire guardian altogether. And yes, there is a way to use wire guardians with 
Ceylon. Even though it's a bit more challenging, I have actually shown how I do it. And I'm sure I'll do it again, but if you're interested, just look for, I don't know, look for a video where I use Ceylon and Wire Guardians. I couldn't tell you which one it is. It's, it's several. Okay, so I just knotted my Ceylon onto the lobster clasp. And now I'm going to tie one more knot. So this is a little bit more, I would say, organic. It's a little bit more loosey-goosey. And speaking of organic, I just want to come back for one second to the entire look of this necklace. So the way I designed it is you really have to embrace the organic uh, feel of this necklace, the organic nature of this necklace. It's very just kind of, um, well, the, the only word that comes to mind is organic. So you you just kind of go, you know, you, you um, choose your beads as you go, or you can lay out your beads. But either way, it's not a pattern. It's meant to be asymmetrical. It's meant to be balanced. So as you use your beads, sometimes you may have a little pattern of beads, sometimes you may have a little cluster of beads, but always remember that um, beads have both visual weight and physical weight. So the physical weight affects our necklace in a very direct way. If we put our heaviest beads on one side and then the other side is left with the light, uh, lighter weight beads, then our pendant is going to hang something like this because it's going to um, go towards the heavier side. So as you're picking your beads, think about the actual physical weight of your beads. You don't have to overthink it. Think about the size, really. But also, in, in design, in art, there's something um, called visual weight. And so what that has to do with is how our eye is drawn to certain things more so than other things. And when you have, uh, when you have a larger bead on one side and a larger bead on, on the other side, that's a good way to balance things. But also keep in mind, that beads that are maybe a little bit transparent, they may weigh the same as a, an opaque bead, but it may not have the same visual weight. So if you want your piece to appear balanced, think about that as well. Or think about um, lighter colored beads always have a little bit less of a visual weight than a darker colored bead. But there's, there's not a whole lot of really big, heavy beads in this necklace, and I'm sure your, um, your necklace will be absolutely beautiful. So you just follow your heart and make it pretty. Fonda is wondering if that is a swivel clasp. Fonda, that's a great question. And no, it is not a swivel clasp. Um, so swivel clasps are, oh, you know what, actually, I, before I knot the, uh, the chain onto my necklace, I'm actually going to put a little tiny amount of super new glue. But to get back to your question, Fonda, it's not a swivel clasp. And the reason I'm not using a swivel clasp for this necklace is because it would simply be a little bit too big. I love swivel clasps. I absolutely think they are amazing. They work so well for, especially for certain types of bracelets. I'm just going to whisk away a little extra glue. And you, you, you saw what I do. I start out right here, kind of um, above the knot. So my goal is always for the glue to just kind of run down the string. I don't know, let's do a little instant replay. Um, so the glue just kind of runs down the string to the knot. And this way, I'm not putting too much glue on the actual knot. So the reason we don't want to over glue the knot is because if we put too much glue and then the glue runs down 
our actual string that we're keeping, whereas this one is going to get cut off in a minute, um, this part would become too brittle with the extra glue, and then it, it would eventually break. So that's not what we're looking for. So this necklace is so dainty. Um, I would have liked to use a swivel clasp, but technically it doesn't really need it because there's no twisting. But anytime you have any sort of a project, maybe it's a, a multi-strand bracelet or maybe a multi-strand necklace, and you're concerned that it's going to twist in the way you don't want, those swivel clasps are a lifesaver. They're awesome, but a little bit too chunky for this. So that's my very, very long-winded answer to why I did not use a swivel clasp. So we're going to glue this end as well. And again, I'm just putting a little bit of glue on the string itself. And I can use my little piece of paper either to guide the glue or to remove the glue. If I have a little extra glue, I can remove that. Okay, so while our one end is, well, actually, you know what? While both of our ends are drying, we are going to make a little component. Let's see, which bead should we use? Maybe this pretty turquoise one. Okay, so I'm just going to make my little bauble component for the end of the chain because I never like it when, uh, when you see a necklace and there is a little extender chain, which of course an extender chain is wonderful because it makes uh, your necklace adjustable whether you're making it for yourself or somebody else, it's always a good thing when it's adjustable because uh, you can adjust it to your neckline, you can adjust it to the, the right size. So I just connected my loop to the chain. Um, but, you know, sometimes I see people leaving it as just uh, a little length of chain and uh, without something at the end, it just looks a little bit unfinished, just a little bit naked. And nobody wants to see naked chain, right? My gosh, it's so scandalous. So, okay, I'm, I'm kidding you guys. Uh, I just think it's a little bit more aesthetically pleasing when you have a pretty little bead hanging off the chain. And of course, remember to use your chain nose pliers to push that little tail in. And this is what it looks like. So just a fun little bead. And if you want, if you have several beads left over, you can always put multiple beads at the end of the chain. Well, actually it comes with one um, ball pin, so maybe not. Okay, so in the meantime, our Ceylon had a chance to dry and we can snip off all of the excess Ceylon and I'm cutting it. I'm being very careful not to cut the, the actual knot. So I'm cutting it just right up to the knot. Okay, and now we're going to finish by putting crimp covers on our knots. So the reason I like to cover the knots, it's not necessarily even because they look so unsightly. In fact, I did think of, uh, instead of um, covering the knots, I, I thought, I really debated, do I want to maybe just leave a little piece, a little uh, piece of Ceylon and tie another bead on it? But, you know, I've done that before and I just wanted to keep it nice and clean with nothing extra hanging. Um, so I decided to use crimp covers to cover the knots. So the reason for covering the knots is since we used glue 
This is actually a little bit pokey. You know, when I touch it, I can feel that little tail that I glued. So when you use glue, it's really a super good idea to cover the knots. And it's just so very, very simple. You know what, before I do that, let me just backtrack a little bit. So this is what a crimp cover looks like. And more often than not, I use it as a knot cover. So it works super well for either one. It's a great little invention. It's only been around, what, for maybe the last 15 years or so. When I first started making jewelry, uh, this would have been great, but it didn't exist. Okay, one more try. So you pick it up like this with your flat nose pliers. You put the knot right in there. And as soon as it's inside your knot cover, you start squeezing. Allie is wondering, do you always use flat nose pliers to attach and close your crimp covers? Um, I do generally. Sometimes I use a chain nose pliers. In fact, I'm so glad you asked, Allie. I'm just holding my string out of the way as I close the crimp cover. So I'm so glad you asked because actually in the kaleidoscope necklace, I used a slightly smaller crimp cover. As you can see, this is a three millimeter as opposed to the four millimeter crimp cover I'm using for the seaside one. And um, I'll tell you why I use them because I had them in the exact color that I wanted to use them in. So this was just a really good color. And so um, that was my uh, my choice. So when you use a um, three millimeter crimp cover, I find it a little bit easier to use a chain nose pliers. But when I use a four millimeter crimp cover, I use a flat nose pliers. Well, and that just has to do with the size of the component I'm working with. So that, it, that really makes sense, right? Okay, so um, so what I do is I get really close to the seam and you know what, I will break it down into separate little steps a little bit better as I close the second crimp cover. So I pick it up like this with my flat nose pliers. I put the crimp, uh, well, this is not a crimp, but it could have been a crimp. So whether it's a crimp or not, it goes right inside of our crimp cover. And at that point, I start squeezing the crimp cover together. So you can see how the two sides are getting closer and closer. And they're going to get to the point where the crimp is closed on the sides like this. So the sides are actually almost touching together, but we have this really big gap in the center. And so what we do is we move our flat nose pliers so that one side of the crimp cover like this is covered by the, the flat nose pliers and you just press gently. So I'm right next to what's going to be the seam. And yeah. I'm sorry, and then I will do the same exact thing on the other side. Allie says, I've used a needle nose and crimp pliers before. Good review on how not to squish one side too much. Oh, gotcha. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. Um, so for me, the flat nose pliers work so well, but you have to do it slowly and you have to remember to shift the position of your pliers. So as soon as they touch in the center, you just change the position so that you're right over that seam and then you only press on the seam. And as you can see now, it just looks like a little round bead. Okay, guys, so um, guess what? 
we just made a whole necklace. We did have a little fast forward there, but this is how you make this necklace. And again, this is uh, the free spirit necklace. And of course, we all want to be a free spirit, especially in the summer. And especially when the weather is beautiful and this is just fun and casual and it goes with just about everything. Well, at least one of them does, right? Depending on what is in your wardrobe. And the kaleidoscope, which is the really colorful one, is already listed in the Etsy shop. And Seaside will be listed in the Etsy shop either tonight or tomorrow. So I guess we'll see just how long we are going to stay here tonight, right? Okay, so in the meantime, I do have a little preview and a little shop update. So I will start with the shop update. So several of you asked us to, to list these little drops, you remember? This is an inklet that I made a couple of weeks ago and everybody got so excited about making inklets. So this is in the Etsy shop. And yes, this is an anklet and it uses a smart bead. It's super, super fun. But what everybody was also excited about is these little metal drops. They are teeny, teeny, tiny drops. They're like literally, what, three by six or so? Uh, so seven. Okay, so three by seven. I'll show you what they look like separately. But um, seven millimeters actually includes the loop as well. So this is what they look like individually. So look how teeny they are. And um, so that is my shop update. And here is my preview of everything that is coming up. So we have, uh, well, actually, let me start with tomorrow's project. So as uh, we were talking about this, this is the Shakery necklace. And uh, this actually, how this came about, I was wearing a Shakery necklace and somebody asked what I'm wearing and I showed my jewelry and then um, it was uh, voted. I love it when you guys tell me what you want to make. So it was voted that we make this shakery necklace in one of these videos. So we're doing it tomorrow morning. And you know what? I love playing with it because it is just so very, very fun. Mary Elizabeth says, Irina, they're both amazing. Oh, sorry, lost it. Beautiful and very wearable with a t-shirt or dressed up. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so glad you said that because that's exactly how I feel. You can you can wear it um, dressed up. You can wear it um, in a very casual way, just with a t-shirt and jeans. And I actually feel kind of the same way about the Shakeray necklace. It can be depending, you know, I could put this on, uh, on with like maybe a black dress and go out and this would actually, even though it's really more of a casual piece, but depending on how you wear it, because um, it's made with the Herkimer diamonds, I think it's kind of chic in a casual way, but still chic. So this is what we are making tomorrow. Allie says, can't wait to see tomorrow's necklace and next week's bracelet. Oh, yeah. Thank you so much, Ellie. Karen says, I love the pearl version. Will it be listed tomorrow? It will be listed by tomorrow. Yes, Karen. Well, either either tonight or tomorrow. We'll just see how long we are going to be here. But definitely tomorrow. And, uh, and then, oh, but wait, there's more. So I have the Gemstone Blossom Bracelet. And this is, uh, of course, I'm going to model it because it's just so much fun. And uh, this is something that um, I wanted to make because it's just so me. And uh, I, I think that I was hoping that you guys would love it too. So I love gemstones. I love just playing with these 
single gemstones and, and, and it's just, this is still in that very free spirited sort of um, 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 mood, I guess. And this actually, to me, this goes so well with either one of our free spirit necklaces. Maria says, imagine the crystal on the red dress. Yes, a red dress or a black dress or um, really any sort of a monochromatic uh, dress, I would say, could be very, very dressy. Ali says, is the closure a flower gemstone button? Yes, it is indeed. What do you guys think about this uh, gemstone flower? It is hand carved. How cool is this little flower? I don't have a ton of these, but I found them. Well, you know, when we moved, a lot of things got a little bit misplaced, shall we say. And as we we're digging out, I find these little treasures. And I was like, oh my gosh, I want to make a bracelet with this so badly. So I will have a couple of different colorways of this bracelet and this is going to be super, super fun. Kim C says, love the gemstone flower button. Maria says, cool. Karen says, gorgeous. Thank you so much, ladies. Kim K says, love all these summer designs. Yay, I'm so glad. Sabrina says, I love the chic neck, uh, maybe chic gray necklace, but they're all beautiful pieces of jewelry. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. Kim C Oh, sorry. And of course, the, the blossom, the gemstone blossom, is definitely a little bit of a nod to summer. You know, everything is in bloom and we're all enjoying it. Kim C says, beyond excited about the necklace tonight and tomorrow, very much my style. Yay! Th thank you so much, Kim. It's very much my style as well. Ellen says, stunning carved gemstone flower. Thank and you Fonda so much. And says, love the flower button. And Kathy K is wondering what the stone the f is the flower um thanks for asking kathy it is bloodstone and it is absolutely stunning and each one because they're carved by hand in, uh, by hand each one is just a little bit different and has so much character it was just so fun to make i love it uh, love the the actual focal piece for this uh, bracelet. So I really had fun making it. Ellen says the shaker a necklace, a must have. Love it. Oh yay! Thank you so much. So we will have, um, and I have to tell you guys. So with the shaker a necklace, um, what we did is um, we actually put together two different kits, and partially we did that because there are not that many of either one. So we thought, okay, we'll start. These are all interchangeable, right? So um, they, and as, as you saw, I was, um, I was putting the different uh, stones into the netting and the netting just kind of adjust to the shape of the stone that you have. So here's the same netting with the crystal and now we'll do something that's entirely different in shape so here's my beautiful labradorite and um and it has some really cool colors in it can you guys see does the camera pick up uh pick up the really cool colors in the labradorite so anyway so as you can see it just really adjusts to the shape of your stone but where I was actually going with this is we're not going to have that many of either one. So please don't wait ordering this one because there, there may be a redesign uh, sooner rather than later because we just could not find enough of these crystals or the amethyst drops. Uh, Ellen says, uh, will the amethyst be available? Yes, it's definitely available. In fact, it's already available in the Etsy shop. And and that's why I'm, um, I'm mentioning, because I know that a lot of people wanted the amethyst, and that's why I'm mentioning that there are not that many. So uh, with some things, it's okay to wait because we have a lot. But with this one, I would order sooner rather than later. Kim C says, great double point crystal. Thank Allie says, so lovely. Much. 
Kathy Kay says, love all the new designs. So inspiring. Yay, thank you so much. Kathy Kay says, smoky quartz would be pretty too. It would indeed if we had it, but uh, right now we don't have any. And I have one more thing to show you. And this is, um, okay, it's not entirely, entirely finished, but this is the part of it that is finished. And this is a necklace that I'm calling Journey to Thailand because I love this piece. And it just reminds me um, of a Thai-inspired design. We used to have, we used to get all these gorgeous sterling silver beads with beautiful granulation like this. So it reminds me of that, but it also reminds me of those beautiful Thai headdresses. And um, so this is a necklace that we will be making next Friday. And of course the bracelet, the gemstone blossom bracelet, that is our project for next Thursday. So this is um, something we're going to have a lot of fun with. Okay, guys. So of course those are not yet available. All right, so now I think I've shown you everything I have in front of me on my desk. And I think that probably means that we are done for today, right? So here, let me just lay these out so we can all see them one more time and decide what it is that you're bonding with. And, um, and unless you have questions, comments, um, I think we're done for today, right? Allie says, thanks for another fun session. Thank you so much, Allie. I appreciate it. And it is my pleasure. Okay, so all these pieces. Connie says, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Connie. All right, guys. Um, you have a wonderful and creative evening, and I will see you tomorrow morning.